Okay, you've got your basic graph. I'm now going to show you some tweaks just to make sure it works even better. So as you can see on this graph, now that the, the numbers have changed a bit, the scale has been replaced on the y-axis with, with too many numbers there. So there's, um, there's two marks where there used to be one. So we're going to go into the graph and just fix it so that um, it always gives us the correct scale. So if you go to the scale, I usually remove all the automatic things because I want to have control over my graph. So it always looks nice. So I'm going to change the maximum to 0.5, the major interval to 0.1, and then click OK. And then I'm always going to have a nice scale with no additional numbers saying the same thing. But what happens if you have negative numbers? Other things start to change. So I'm now going to change the data by just subtracting 0.5 from all of my all of my data points. And before the trick I did before was subtracting 0.3 to make a consistent effect size. And now I'm just going to reduce that even more. So now a lot of our data is negative, and you can see the, the numbers have actually disappeared off the graph. So we're going to go back, back to our graph, and then we're going to set that to minus 0.5. Actually, let's go minus 0.4 and 0.4, and then a major interval of 0.2 to make it nice round numbers. That's OK. Um, you can see now the you can see the graph again the data, but we, we're losing the error bar on the other condition there. So 0.4 is obviously not enough. I want this to be symmetrical, so I'm going to go 0.6 and keep the major interval 0.2, so that you have nice evenly spaced numbers. And there we are. That's much better. You can now see the data, and you can see that it's negative rather than positive. Excellent. But there's a problem when you go to negative data, the, the labels don't automatically go to the bottom. So it's really annoying now you've got the, the labels over the data. So you want to remove that. Go into the x-axis properties, go to label, no, nope. go to positioning rather. And then you can place the labels outside the start, and that's outside the lowest point of the y-axis. And then the labels go back to where they should be. But you've also got these little tick marks, which are a little bit annoying. So we'll just get rid of those tick marks. Interval marks at axis and labels. No, you just want interval marks at the axis. And because it's now positive and negative, having both major inner and major outer marks is more useful. There you go. So that now has corrected the problem with the y-axis scale and with negative numbers. And the labels are not being obscured by the data or vice versa. Now that's interesting, and it shows you two independent conditions there, and that's good for categorical responses or for different groups. But actually, in a within participants design, often the thing you want the most is the differences between participants. So we're now just going to plot a single graph of the differences between participants. So I've just copied the graph there. I'm now going to change the data, go to data series, the y values. And instead of the, the two conditions, we're just going to take the individual difference between conditions and then call that. OK. Now I'm just going to fix the y-axis scale there. There we go. So now we've, we've got two different versions of the same data. We've got the individual conditions plot separately, and then we've got the difference between conditions. Now, in within subjects design, the statistics relate most clearly to the differences between conditions. So it's often the most sensible thing to do. But plotting a single graph for uh, this comparison is really a waste of space. You can just report the numbers. So what else can we do to make this comparison look a bit better, but also show you the differences that you really want to see? And the answer is to try and show individual participants' data. So there's a movement now in science to more and more show as much of the data as possible. And the, and the graphics and the computer programs we've got makes it much easier to do so. So let's change some graphs to plot some individual differences. So let's get rid of this graph because it's taking up some space. OK, one of the useful ways to present individual difference data so showing each individual subject is by doing a different line for every single subject. 
and that's best done with a slightly different kind of graph. So we're going to use a, an XY or scatter graph. That way you have much more control over the axis. We want points and lines. Okay, so let's add a single participant. Let's add someone. So let's call them name one. Um, X values, we're going to use numbers for the X values. So we're just going to use one and two. And we're going to put them into that cell up there. The Y values are going to be self and other over here. Okay, so let's put one and two here. Okay, okay, let's get rid of that. And we'll just do the same formatting as before. So this is one participant. Good way to show the data would be a circle, a light grey colour, so that all the individual participants don't look too dark. Now again, really big labelling so that we can actually read it when we paste it somewhere. And these numbers are a bit obtrusive, so I'm going to move those numbers to the bottom. Uh, the labels outside start, and then a, a crossover tick like that. Excellent. And we don't want those Okay. And actually, it's not a numerical axis, so we actually want to get rid of most of these labels. So we can do that by changing the color of the labels to white. And let's get rid of these interval marks. There we go. So now we have, it looks like a categorical graph, but actually it's a, an XY graph, and it gives us a bit more flexibility. So that's individual participant number one. Let's add a second participant, Call number two, x values one and two, same as before, y values from there. Let's add number three, backwards, y values. It's more work doing it this way, but you produce a much nicer graph at the end. But if you do it on all 20, it'll look very nice indeed. OK, so now you've got five individual participants. Um, I'm just going to change those all to the same style. If you wanted to see individual, individual participants and identify them, then you would use different colors and symbols. But it gets really confusing and a bit painful on the eye when you're doing that. Um, in different colors. And really, we just want to see on average, whether every single participant is showing the same kind of relationship. OK, so there we now have five individual participants. And you couldn't really be sure, just looking at that, whether there was a significant effect or not. So why don't we go and add a few more? Let's do 10. OK, there we go. So now more individual variability. We need a wider range of data. Let's keep it symmetrical. OK, the, the, the y-axis is getting a little bit busy now, a bit too many labels. So we can either increase the axis there to spread them out a bit more. That's probably good enough. But you could also decrease the number of numbers being shown. And again, let's get rid of this colouring. OK, excellent. Now you have every one of the 10 participants shown individually. You can see just by looking at the data that about seven of them show a decrease from left to right, self to other, and three of them show an increase. So you'd think at this level there's probably something here, but you might need to see a bit more data. But we're going to put also the mean of the groups 
on. So we haven't got all the, all the participants in there here yet, but let's add the mean. So we'll just label the mean. X values, again, it's going to be 1 and 2. Y values from self and other. Excellent. That's showing up in red. So let's make that distinctive. So let's make it black. And let's put a different shape symbol. Now it's also, um, it seems to be buried in, in amongst all the other data points. So let's see if we move it to the top. That's better. So we can now see it. And let's also add error bars like we did before to these data cell range. Let's have standard error. Excellent. OK, and this is, apart from this label, you might want to spread out this label a bit by simply just putting a load of spaces in there. It's good enough for this case. And there we have a graph showing all of the information you need to make a quick decision about your data. So you've got the mean and the standard error showing you the overall group effect. Then you've got a single line for each of the individual participants in the background showing all the individual data points. And you can immediately see that there's quite a strong, consistent relationship, both in the difference in means in the black lines and in the individual subjects, the gray lines. And that is like the ideal way to present a within subjects design with two conditions. With more complex designs, it's going to get a bit more tricky or not so beautiful. So you really just have to consider how many subjects you've got, whether you can show them all. Um, and you can show lots of subjects. You can just make these gray lines thinner and the circles, you can just remove the circles or make them smaller. But you can show as much data as possible on your graph by using a number of neat tricks like this. Okay, the final graph I'm going to show you is just a simple correlation graph between the two conditions. So let's insert a an XY scatter graph. It does need to be a scatter graph. Oops. It has chosen some data for me, which is very annoying. Move these. Right, the data we want to plot are X versus Y. So let's do the correlation between self and other. There seems to be perhaps a negative correlation. But again, the default graph is really messy, not very nice at all. So let's just do the same thing with all these numbers. Get rid of the unnecessary decimal places. Get rid of the legend, which we don't need. Make the axis so you can actually see it. And let's move the labels outside the start. Do the same on this one. Get rid of the border. Let's add some titles. So x-axis is self, y-axis is other. Just need to get rid of these unnecessary lines. Let's remove the squares because they're a bit annoying. Have a nice medium gray color. And finally, font sizes. Let's make it the same as usual. And there we go. We have a much nicer formatting of an XY graph. If you then want to do, for example, you can, um, if you highlight one of the data series, you can then insert a trend line, for example, a linear regression. I'll just stick that in there. And this shows you the possible correlation between the data sets. And to test whether there is indeed a correlation between the data sets, you can use the Excel function equals corel. So there may be a small correlation there, but it looks pretty, pretty weak to me. So that's three simple ways to produce different kinds of graph. There are many other possible kinds of graph, but these are your basic ones.